Uh, good morning, uh, church. Uh, we're here in uh, Masuja, right? Yes. And uh, Pastor Sam's back there. Say hi, Pastor Sam. Hi. And everyone else, we say hi. 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 We miss you, and we look forward to seeing you sometime, uh, what, a couple weeks? See ya. Wow, that was short and sweet, but it was good to see that they're there and everything's going well. Yes, have you been praying for them? Continue to lift them up that the Lord's mercies would be upon them. Just a few brief announcements. Um, in your pews, you'll see these cards. Some of you probably just draw pictures of the pastor or whatever on them. I don't know what you do, but really they're meant to... Uh, if you have a prayer request or if you're a first-time visitor, we would love for you to fill out some information. Put it in the offering plates, and at the end of the service, our efficient offering guys will be out the back with the plates. Just drop it in there. Uh, whatever's going on in your life, let us know. And it's also Pastor Appreciation Month. So if you've got a note you want to say to Pastor Greg about how much you appreciate him, just drop that in there. It would be a word of encouragement to him. All right. Tithes and offerings will also go in the back there as we go. On November 4th will be a day of uh, prayer for the church, fasting and prayer. And what, it's timely because November 5th is what? Election, Election Day. So be in prayer. God, what, how would you have me to vote? You'd be surprised what God would help you with. And uh, just vote, but be sure to vote. Don't say, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. Every vote matters. And just, just get out there and vote on November the 5th, Election Day. Uh, pray for our Uganda team. Continue to lift up the Stevensons and the, and the things that are going on there for, in Uganda. Uh, today is the day, the last day, to sign up for the, the uh, going to the Star Theater with the adult group. Details are down in the, in the lobby, uh, but if you're wanting to go with them to see, and they're going to see the book of Ruth, and uh, if you want to go with that group, be sure and sign up. Today's your last day, and today we have Pastor Booker with us. We are glad you've come, and we look forward to what you, the Lord has laid on your heart. Well, had, did you come away disappointed after last night's baseball game? Yeah, most of us are. But I'll give you, a, I'll tell you something. If you're on God's team and you know Jesus, uh, there's a great end to the story. And we heard about it from Revelation last week. It's not disappointing. So I would encourage you, if you don't know Jesus, give your life to Christ. And what a great uh, ending of the story there will be. Praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to gather together as believers and worship. We pray that our fellowship would uh, draw us closer to you and to each other. Uh, bless the pastor as he brings the message this morning. And for all that you're about to do in our midst, we'll give you the praise for you alone are worthy in Jesus' name. Amen. Now stand up and greet someone around you. Let them know you're glad they're here. Good morning again. Welcome. Please join us in praise and worship this morning.
His sins, our sins, they're many. His mercy is way more. 
But you know, it's not just through that alone, right? Ironically, if we go back to Revelation 3.20, there's that portrayal, that image of Jesus knocking at the door. It takes our action. He doesn't just come into our lives on his own. He's there, he's waiting. It takes us in a response to make room for him to come into our lives. And that's what matters as well.
seated as we end for our time of prayer. Good morning. Uh, this morning we, we get to have the privilege, we realize that, to come together uh, as a family and worship the Lord for who he is. And then as we worship God for who he is, we also get to worship God for the things that he's done in our lives, the, the answered prayers that we come and bring each week and lift up before the Lord. And that's because God is many things. Uh, God is a, a healer, he's a sustainer, he's a provider. And because of that, we can bring those things here each week and we don't have to let them saturate our life, but we can, we can set them down at his feet and give them to the Lord knowing that he's moving and doing things. And so there's power in prayer because God cares about the little things, cares about the big things, and God's moving in ways that we don't even know. <laughs> With stuff we don't even ask for sometimes. We're like, oh Lord, I didn't even know that was happening. Thank you. Thank you that you were there. Would you pray with me? Father, we come this morning acknowledging that every good thing that we have in our lives, all the good things that happen are given by you. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for all the answered prayers. Thank you for all the things, Lord, that you have moved in our lives that we didn't even know what was happening. We also come here this morning acknowledging that some of us have struggles. Uh, some of us had, have hardships, Lord. We have worries. And we know, Lord, that we don't have to hold on to those, but that we can give them to you. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would wash over us this morning, that you would meet our needs, Lord, that there are many here who have them. Uh, there are some that are not here today, Lord, because they can't get here. And, and some that are online, and we just, we lift them up, Lord. And we ask that you would provide for them the need that they let need. Lord, we lift up Adriana Stewart and Ken Gilberson, Terry Moore and Cheryl Jones, Yolato Santiago and Catherine Floto, Becky DeBose, Ray Wall, Tracy Murphy, Tim Henry, Michael Geegan, Joanne Bowers, Steve Brooks, Brenda Johnson, Linda Noggle, Howard Deal, Bob and Dina Rowe, Shannon Hostetler and Ken Earnhardt, Debbie McHenry, Ron Vance, and Adam Turneau. Lord, we lift up uh, the, the, fam the Brooks and Harrison family uh, with the loss of, of Landon. We pray that you would give them comfort in this time. And we also think of the, the Poland family, Lord, as Brad's father, Jack, passed. And we just pray that you would surround them uh, with your love and your comfort. And Lord, we pray for the mission team who's in Uganda right now. We pray that Holy Spirit, that you would bless them, that you would speak through them, that you would move with them in safety, that your presence would always be resting upon them as they reach out to the people of Uganda. And Lord, just bless the, their time in union with them of love that they're sharing between one another as you do your mission there. Work through their lives, Lord, that they come back changed and that spills out onto us as we reach those around us. And Lord, I would ask that this morning as we come here, that you would clear our minds, that you would prepare our hearts, be with Pastor Booker as he uh, brings the message, Lord. Lord, that you would clear away any distractions and that we would hear from you. We ask that you would bless him. All this in your name, Jesus. Amen.
Good morning. morning. It is a joy to be here today, Um, and I don't say that lightly. Um, There's two congregations in this state that I have fallen in love with, and you're one of them. (laughs) You're one of them. Don't ask me about the other one. (laughs) Just be glad you're in the number of two. And uh, it's just a joy to be here on today. I enjoy when I wake up in the morning. I enjoy when I prepare the sermon. And then I wake up in the morning and I travel a little over two hours to get here. And just the joy I have of saying I'm going to East Kent and, and to see friends. And um, what a joy it is to be here. And I'm getting a little older. I've been doing this for a while. (laughs) I just um, celebrated in September to the young people. Um, I was 15 when I heard the call on my life. And I'm 66 now, so you do the map. (laughs) You you just do the map. And um, I preached my first sermon at 16, heard the call at 50, so just celebrated 50 years of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you. And you didn't hear, uh, last month, my boss and I announced our retirement for next year. I guess it's going to take them a while to replace us, but uh, they're going to get that going. And um, until then, I'm going to finish well and hopefully finish strong. I'm following in Larry's footsteps. (laughs) He got out a little bit before me. But I'm trying to catch up with him. He and I got this uh, brotherhood connection and uh, just been a blessing. I'm excited about today. I'm always excited about um, talking about Jesus. I just get the privilege of doing it on this platform, which I am humble. I I haven't always been humble. God had to deal with me at times, uh, particularly when I graduated from college and I just thought I knew it all. I said, give me a church, Lord, I'll straighten them up. <laughs> God had to deal with me, but it's funny. You come out of college, and you learn a little Greek, and you learn theology, and you think you know it all, and, and the Holy Spirit kind of whipped you in shape and said, take that that you have learned, be humble, and let me use that. Um, and it's been an honor and a privilege of it using that for God. So uh, let's pray. Lord, the wonderful songs that came through and from beginning to even now, what a joy it's been, Father, just being a part of the worship experience this morning. And Lord, we do make room for you to do whatever you want to do this morning. Because this morning, Lord, Many of us have come uh, with expectations of your Holy Spirit, answering prayers, speaking to our hearts, bringing deliverance and inspiration. And Lord, whatever that means, however that look, however that feel, whatever the manifestation of that, Lord, we say yes to your will. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us in the midst of this sanctuary. We pray for everyone. Those who eagerly got up this morning, (laughs) dressed up this morning and came to church, and those who had to come. (laughs) Whatever way, Lord, that we're filling this sanctuary, we're here. And Lord, we give it to your Holy Spirit to rest in this place, abide in this place, listening to every heart and knowing what you want for all of us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, Lord, to you as you speak through me to your congregation. Revive, restore, 
heal, refresh, renew dreams and visions and aspirations so that when we leave this place, we would be a better people and we would be empowered <laughs> to go forth and do whatever you ask of us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So for the next uh, hour and a half, <laughs> you're not falling for that. <laughs> um, for the next few minutes that I have, I want to talk about God. Of course, I can talk about a lot of stuff, but I, I don't like it when preachers don't talk about God. <laughs> And I still talk about God, and I want to talk about God today. And I want to talk about the God of the Old Testament, because in the Old Testament, we are introduced to who God is. Uh, you know, you may be an Old Testament, New Testament person. I'm a whole Bible person. <laughs> and in the Old Testament, it's this beautiful in Genesis how we are introduced to who God is, his character and what he does. And I want to introduce you to that God today. And we call him the God who sees. I'll say the Hebrew in a moment, but I just want to read the scripture to you first. Um, Genesis 16, 7 through 13. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. He said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I hope somebody catch that. You know, God is always interested in where you're going, not just your past. She replied, I'm running away. My mistress Sarai, from my mistress Sarai, the angel of the Lord said to her, go back to your mistress and submit to her authority. Ooh. Wow. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> the angel said of the Lord, the angel of the Lord rather said to her, I will greatly multiply your offspring and they will be too many to count. The angel of the Lord said to her, you have conceived and will have a son. You will name him Ishmael. For the Lord have heard your cry of affliction. This man would be like a wild donkey. His hand would be against everyone, and everyone's hand would be against him. He will settle near all his relatives. And so she named the Lord who spoke to her, You are El Roy. For she said, In this place have I actually seen the one who sees me. In the scriptures that I just spoke to you about, the character of God is mentioned. Now, all of this is kind of pre-Moses. And in Moses, we find out a lot about God also. But in this particular uh, 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 chapter of verses, we come, this, uh, come in tune with the God of El Rohi, or the God who sees me. Now, so when it said the God that sees me, God sees us even though we have a roof over our head in this sanctuary. God still looks down and sees us. He knows how many people who are in this sanctuary today. He not only knows how many people who are here, he knows your name. He knows your relationship to the person sitting next to you or in front of you or behind you. God knows who's working on duty today. Those who came early and those who came late. God knows. <laughs> he knows what car you drove here today in. He knows what car you'll leave today. He knows all of that. And that's the physical stuff that he can see. But he also sees inside of you. Uh, that's why it cracks me up when people say, you know, God won't know. I'm like, he won't? No, 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 he won't know. He, 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 he can only see. I'll turn off the lights and he won't know anything. For those of you that go partying on Saturday night, he knows. He was there. He may not have went inside because he can't be touched by sin, but he saw you. <laughs> 
And so God sees not just the numbers, but he sees us as people. And guess what? He sees what's in your heart. He sees what you're going through, what you went through, what's going to come your way. He sees the train wreck, the car wreck, the problems, the challenges, the, the uh, week that's coming or the week that you just passed. He understands your trials and tribulations, your trouble, your stress, your duress. God sees all of that. And there's no other person. This is a character that only God, a characteristic of God that only he has. No other powerful entity being sees what God sees. And in this story today, we are introduced to a God that sees a woman going through pain and suffering and injustices, and she's running away. And if you're here today and you've been running for something, Demetrius Booker is here to say to you, God sees, he understands what you're going through. And this character of God, the El Roy, the God who sees, does more than just see. <laughs> That's the beauty of God. He's got a plan to help you to deal with what you're going through. So I may have told this story before. Um, the first time... I heard from God, and when I say heard from God, most of what we do is by faith. But three times in my life, I have heard a voice outside of my voice. I was just praying, and, uh, um, and, and me and God was having a conversation. Well, to be honest with you, um, I had a come to Jesus meeting with God. You ever had that with God? I said, oh, Lord, we, mm -mm, we got to have a talk. Because I don't think you understand what's going on here. Uh, I had left my corporate job and went full time into ministry, moved from the Midwest out to California to go to school. At this time, I was married. My youngest child caught meningitis, got very sick. She wouldn't have gotten sick if I hadn't have gone to California. The health department told me we got, it was bacteria meningitis. And she, she got very sick and lost a lot of her hearing. And I had a come to Jesus meeting with God because I felt that he had messed up the plan. He had told me to go to school, but he didn't tell me my daughter would get sick. And now I'm on my knees, uh, crying out to God, upset with God. And I made the statement that nobody should ever make before. I said, God, you don't understand. <laughs> I, I said, you know, I mean, I was crying, and I remember I leaned back off my uh, knees, and I said, you don't understand. Why am I talking to you? And Larry, a voice outside of my voice, I don't understand. I'm looking around, and I heard it again, I don't understand. And now I'm getting nervous. I'm checking rooms in my house. I don't see anybody. And now I'm having a conversation with God. And I told you the litmus test, if I'm lying to you, God has permission to strike me dead in the pulpit. I leaned back and said, well, Lord, what's going on? Because I don't understand this. And God said, I don't understand? And he said, let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you what they did to him. And God went through all the stripes that Jesus went through, the persecution that he went through, the dying on the cross that he went through. And then he said, now get up. Dry your tears. Your daughter will be okay. It's for my glory. My daughter grew up hearing impaired but graduated from normal schools went on to graduate from high school, went on to graduate from college, went on to get her master's degree. Uh, she's now a clinical director of a clinic, and she became okay. Oh, and went to that school we call Anderson University. <laughs> 
But at the time, when she was just two and a half years old, I had to come to Jesus meeting with God. Because I didn't think that God was seeing what I was going through. And I told that brief story to say to you that the God El Rohi sees everything. If you think he didn't see how someone's treating you, someone misusing you on your job or in your home or in your community, God sees it all. That's part of why the scripture said, vengeance is mine. I'll repay. I see what they're doing to you. I see what you're going through. And vengeance is mine. And in our text today, God steps up and steps out and deal with somebody that's going through something. He's dealing with this person that's going through some trials. But the God who sees is also the God in John 148 that said to Nathaniel, he said to him, how do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, before Philip called you, you were under the fig tree and I saw you. Only once in the Bible, in the Old Testament, will you ever see the El Rohi God. It was when Hagar was going through. And then Jesus jumps in the New Testament and tells Nathaniel, I saw you before I even saw you. The power of God is that God sees you. If you've been messing up and stepping out and thinking God doesn't see you, he sees you. And I grew up in the church where the mothers of the church, somehow God told the mothers of the church my business. <laughs> I come to church, know I messed up that week, and one of the mothers of the church, come here, son. <laughs> I said, oh boy, here we go, here we go. Sit down, I want nobody hear this. God just told me to tell you something. What did he tell you? Tell me. He saw you. <laughs> I just, you know, I couldn't do nothing wrong. I just couldn't do nothing. The young people say, hey, we're going over here. I say, I'm not going. Y'all can go, but I'm not going. They went someplace one time, did something one time. The pastor called the meeting. He said, I want to meet with all the young people. But Demetrius, I want to thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I've been called in the pastor's carpet too many times or in this office on the carpet. God sees, and, and Jesus says to Nathaniel, I saw you. God sees us, not just who you are in your flesh, but he sees your spirit, he sees your circumstances, and he is here to help you and comfort you. And so in my next few minutes, what do I want to talk about? He not only sees you, he understands. God understands. He has an answer or solution for you. To get, I call it a get out of jail free card. <laughs> God has a get out of jail free card for you and I to help you with whatever you're going through because he understands. In fact, it, that's what I want you to understand today. If you leave the church, I want you to know that God sees you and he understands, but he is empowered to do something about it. That's the difference between our God and any other God that people make up or create. Is that God sees you, he understands, and he has the power to do something about it. And so, what did God do here? For Hagar, God helps her. God helps Hagar. So Hagar was a maid servant of Sarah, or Sarai, because before the promise, her name was Sarai. Before uh, Abraham received the promise, it was Abram. But let's just say Sarah and Abraham. So Sarah uh, is childless. And she says to her husband, sleep with this woman. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> she gave him permission. And she had my child. And when she's having the child, I'm going to lay under her. The Bible so can't can get messy. <laughs> I'm going to lay under her, and if she's pushing this child into her, I'm going to feel like I'm the one pushing also. That's going to be my baby. <laughs> and, and that's what she said. But uh, when Hagar gets pregnant, she understands the rights that she has now. <laughs> because she is now going to have the child 
of the person that was given the promise from God, Abraham. And so she gets a little arrogant, <laughs> starts running her mouth. Anybody run their mouth in here? Don't raise your hand and quit pointing at that person. <laughs> and, 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 and Hagar gets uh, real um, uh, talking stuff and prideful. And Sarah says to her husband, uh-uh, uh-uh. She, she don't, she's going to have this baby and she's trying to take my position in this family. And Abraham said, do whatever you want. And Hagar knows she's in trouble. So she's running now in the desert. And she's running towards Shur. Shur, S-H-U-R, in the Hebrew means the wall. It was a place in Pinnacle. Once you get there, nobody could get you. And she thought she could get there. Nobody would get her. But while she's running, that's when God comes. He sees her and he speaks to her. And so the first thing he does to help her is he speaks to her and he says, go back. Now, for some of you, you would think going back would not be the solution to your problem. But oftentimes, God don't want us to be a people of running. He wants us to be a people that allow him to work through us. Sometimes it's not about running or escaping. It's about staying there. When I was in corporate America. I was one of the few executives in my division that didn't drink, didn't smoke, didn't go to parties. And uh, I remember one time listening to a radio station, and this guy he was called uh, uh, Pastor Bulgog. He was out of the Detroit area. And somebody called him and said, I pray for me because I'm thinking about quitting my job. He said, why? You're going to quit your job. And they said, because a bunch of heathens there. And I shouldn't be around heathens. He said, God got you planted exactly where you should be to help those people understand. Because remember, we're the salt and the light, of, we're the light of the world, the salt of the earth. Well, how do you be light and salt and you running from darkness? And so God said to me in the corporate world, you stay there and let them learn about you. Let them see your ways. And I remember because I started working for Wall Street. I don't know if any of you here ever worked for Wall Street. It was a lot of pressure on me to turn corporations around and do things because it was all about the money we had to make. We called it EBITDAB or EBITD, earnings before interest, taxes and deductions. And I remember I was telling the truth and a lot of my peers were lying. I knew they were lying. And I said, I'm getting out of here. I'm, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. I mean, the CEO would call me and say, Booker, I'm coming to town. Meet me at the airport. And I would ride with him all day. <laughs> I said, Lord, why are you doing this to me? And after a while, the divisional vice president called me up. He said, Demetrius, I'm going to tell you something. I said, are they mad at me? No, we discovered something. I said, he said, I said what you discovered? He said, everybody's been lying but you. <laughs> we looked at the inventory. <laughs> We looked at the delivery. We looked at the sales. Your numbers are the only ones that are right. I said, what you want me to do now? Take over the whole division. I said, no, I don't have to. Uh-uh, fire whoever you want. Get rid of the liars. My bonus was more than most people were making in yearly salary. I could have ran away. I could have stepped away. I'm here to speak to somebody today. You may be that individual that God is saying to you, don't run. Go back. Stay where you are. Make a difference where you are. Don't run. Don't go back. He says to Sarah, go back. I know what they're doing to you, but I'm going to deal with them. But you go back. Number two, what should, did we learn or she learn? He instructs her, be her servant or Sarah's servant or slave. Not just return to your physical location, but return back and endure the pain and the suffering. Don't quit. Do not quit because what I'm saying to you is part of my divine plan. And I'm saying to those of you today, when you say, Demetrius, it's hard not to run. It's hard not to quit. God is saying to you, it may be part of my divine plan for what you do. See, I learned something a long time ago. When you are a believer, you don't get to make decisions for yourself. Uh-oh, this is a tough one. You have to bring God into the equation because what you do 
has a kingdom impact on what you do. And so you may be a ministry of assistant somewhere, and God is telling you, don't quit. I know you're working with a bunch of heathens. <laughs> People manipulating the numbers that aren't true. Oh, I, I know it all. I've been around for quite a while. <laughs> and God is saying to you, don't leave. You may be in an uncomfortable situation, and you're the only one that has the light and has salt in your life, but God is telling you through instructions, do not leave. He tells Sarah, I mean, hey, girl, I'm sorry. Go back. He instructs her, be her servant. Now, why would God do that? She's going through a bunch. She's on the run. And he tells her to go back. <laughs> My youngest daughter, uh, in whom I am well pleased, told me one day, I, I, I said, I haven't made you mad one time. I said, why? She said, you did something. And then I said, what you do about it? She said, well, I went in my room, and I got all my beanie babies. <laughs> I put them in the backpack, and I was going to run away. I said, well, why didn't you run away? I didn't have nowhere to go. <laughs> I said, I didn't remember you running away. She said, I didn't get far. I said, well, how far did you get? To my bedroom door. <laughs> she said, I just figured I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to turn you and mom over to God. I said, well, I'm glad you stuck it out <laughs> with your beanie babies. <laughs> Some of the people say, what are beanie babies? <laughs> Y'all have a talk with them. They, they don't remember. <laughs> you may have to be a servant somewhere, not the leader. He told her to serve. Number three, what did she find out? I will give you something for your pain, your suffering, your despair, your distress. I will give you a son. <laughs> wow. God said, I'll give you a promise. I'll give you a promise, a promise of a son. This story affects me deeply because my grandfather's name was Ishmael. <laughs> yeah. and, and God said, I'm going to give you a son, and it's going to be okay. She still went through some stuff, but God gave her a promise. I wonder today, has God given you a promise? You see, sometimes that's the only thing we can live on when we're going through something. When your husband's cutting up, your wife's cutting up, your children not acting right, your parents not acting right, the people on your job not treating you right, life's not treating you right. Sometimes the only thing you have is a promise from God. And you hang in there. Amen. And that promise from God I use from my daughter, who was very sick and caught meningitis, until she graduated from college and she walked across that line, not just college, but even uh, grad school when she got her master's degree, tears were rolling down my eyes because the promise of God were fulfilled. I wonder today, do you have a promise from God? I want to talk about what you're going through. Life is like that. There will always be battles, particularly when you're a believer. There will always be battles, but there is a promise. Jesus left the disciples with a promise. He said, when I go away, the Holy Spirit will come. <laughs> I know you're going to be upset. I know you're going to be disappointed. I know you're not going to know what to do, but the Holy Spirit is going to come. And he's going to instruct you in righteousness. He's going to empower you to go forward. A promise. See, the promises of God is all that we really need as the people of God. Not the troubles we go through, not the pains that you're enduring or the suffering you're going through. It's the promise, can God walk with you with whatever you're going through? It was the same promise that Peter had when he was in jail. They locked him in jail, but they are now doing what? Singing songs <laughs> because they knew God would take care of them. Whether I live or die, they knew God would take care of them. Here's my point. I think most of us who are believers, most of our churches, 
We no longer live on promises. We live on stuff. If God may give us everything we want, uh, one of my, uh, uh, I got twin grandchildren, and one of them already sent her a Christmas list. <laughs> and my youngest daughter, no, I, I don't like that. She know I don't like that. And, and, and she had some app she sent, and we couldn't even let her read the app. And my sister said, can you open that app? I said, I'm not going to try to open that app because I'm not thinking about Christmas till Christmas season. <laughs> we haven't got past <laughs> All Saints Day or Halloween Day, and already she's sending her Christmas list. <laughs> you know, we live on the stuff versus the promises of God. And there was a song we saw back in the day called Standing on the Promises of God. It says, standing on the promises of Christ, my King, through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, because I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail, when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail. I'm standing on the promises of God. Verse 5 said, standing on the promises, I shall not fail, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting. Are you resting? I had to do that when I went through with my daughter. Resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God. The worship team is going to come and play that kind of in the background, maybe sing a couple of verses but what I want you to understand through this, Hagar had difficulties. She didn't know what was going on. But God revealed to her who he was and what he could do for her. And it was the promises that God gave her. I'll give you Ishmael. It's going to be okay. I'm going to love you. We're going to get through this. And I'm here today as a testimony to tell you that God, through his promises, helped me in life. And when there was doubt, when there was darkness, when there was confusion, it was knowing that God sees me and God understood what I was going through. <laughs> uh, in my case, he spoke back to me, put me in my place. <laughs> but I made it through. Listen to the words of this song and then I'll come back and pray us out. If you'll stand with me, please, and uh, take a hymnal, turn to 352, just in case we have a glitch in the screen. 352. Standing on the promises of Christ,
bow your heads and as I begin to pray if you say brother Demetrius I need a promise from God or the promise God gave me I need to stand on that and trust in that if you just raise your hand and we'll include you in our prayer just raise your hand amen 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 and maybe you say I don't have a promise I need something to help me through this difficult time raise your hands Amen. God sees you. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you for scriptures that remind us of who you are. And today we learn about you, Lord, that you see all. You're not only almighty, all-knowing, and everywhere present, but you also see us. And you see where we are physically and you see where we are spiritually you see our dilemmas our problems and lord that's why we thank you that's why we come to church that's why we trust you because you see all and as you saw hagar and the problems that she went through you understood and you gave her a promise and lord today I pray for East Canton, Church of God. For every person here, for every leader here, for every mother, father, husband, wife, for every child that's going through something. I pray for the leaders of this church that are going through something. Whatever difficulties we may have, whether they be physical, emotional, spiritual, financial, whatever those difficulties are, Lord, that's troubling us. <laughs> we know that you see them. And Lord, through my experience, through what I went through, and you're speaking back to me, I give this opportunity, this lesson learned to your children here today that you will help them, Lord. Strengthen those who already received the promise. Help those, Lord, they don't have a promise. They, they don't have that assurance, Lord, that they need to go through what they're going through. And Father, because you love us and you understand us, I ask that you may give them that promise or strengthen that promise. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us, covering us, empowering us to do whatever you told us to do. Yes, Lord, we shout for joy from the first song that was saying, Lord, we shout for joy that you see us and you hear us, and we shout because you're able to do all things but fail. Lord, don't fail us now as we rest on the promise of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray for that person who don't know you. They don't know the God who is able to save. They don't know the God who is able to renew and restore. And I pray for their souls today. I pray for where they are spiritually, Father, that what they have heard today in the sermon or through the songs or through the fellowship of the saints, that their lives would be different. Now, Lord, as we depart from this place, let us go forth telling a new story, living a new life, refresh and renewal in our spirit because we have heard from you. And Lord, continue to remember those who are on the mission trip, Lord. <laughs> the promises they have made, may you reinforce those in Jesus' name. Amen.
Yeah. 